Well, my name's Peter Webster. Um, I, uh, I was station manager here um, in the late 1990s, 95 to 98, and we're currently standing in the main control room um, of Oldbury Power Station. I enjoyed it very much. I, I, uh, I do admire the technology. I, I admire the control that goes into it, and I find it very interesting. And, and there was a degree of passion about uh, the people who, who chose to work in this industry and, and the level of commitment, the level of interest and the level of expertise I thought was, was just, um, it was good to be associated with. It's putting to use that uh, raw material, the, um, the uranium, for which there's very little other use in, in, in nature. It's a naturally occurring element and uh, it, be able to get um, electricity, power from, from that material through the processes that we've, you know, mankind has devised, um, I, I think is, is fantastic. And uh, the, um, the degree of sort of control that's, that's built into nuclear power plants that is, is, um, it, is, is very refined and they, they are essentially big pieces of equipment, they're big toys, they, um, they, they, there's, there's a lot of things that, that, that form part of the, of the power station itself. And, and I just found that I continue to find them really very interesting. Well, we're obviously inside the, the old repower station reactor block. And we're standing on top of one of the reactors on what we call the pile cap, um, which is essentially the, uh, the top of the main reactor core itself. Um, it's the area from which the, uh, the reactor is accessed to refuel. And uh, around us, we, we can we can see the, the, the big fueling gantries and the, and the fueling machinery which were, which were used to uh, routinely change the fuel. Well, the reactor, of course, is the, is the source of heat for the power station. And um, inside this core, um, all of the nuclear fuel is, is sitting there. And also in, inside the space is the carbon dioxide gas, which is used to take the heat away from the, the uh, fuel rods and the, uh, also in, inside this space are the boilers, the heat exchangers. So you can imagine this is, the, this is the unit that essentially produces the steam which turns the, the steam turbines um, which we'll look at elsewhere. Um, but the, um, in, in terms of what you can see going on up here, this you could see very little. And, unless the, the plant was refueling, this is what it looked like. It was calm reasonably quiet and, and, as I say, a little warmer. Um, the, um, the gas is circulated round. The gas is at quite a high pressure and it's circulated round inside the core by some, some large steam-driven gas circulators which are, which are elsewhere down in the reactor hall um, well below us. And um, the, um, there are some pipes which you can't see from here which basically bring feed water into the boilers. That's turned into steam by the, the heat in the reactor and the steam then goes off and, and turns the uh, steam turbine generators around and, and ends up generating electricity. The fuel does need changing from time to time and the, um, this type of reactor, the Magnox reactor, is one of the very few in the world that's able to change that fuel while the reactors at power, essentially on load refueling we called it. Where I am now is on the, the, um, the top of the central block between the two reactors and this, this essentially is the, the top of a lot of tubes that go down into various facilities and I won't describe them in detail but essentially through some of these the fueling machine gets its new fuel and it discharges the used fuel. These, these um, um, uh, essentially, these, these, these holes are, are sometimes go all the way down to the cooling ponds where the fuel is kept. Um, sometimes they're just storage tubes. Some of them are used for maintenance on things like control rods. There's lots of different access ports here to, uh, to different facilities and, and all used in the, in the process of, of either maintaining the uh, um, the equipment like the control rods or essentially changing the fuel. So behind me here is one of the fueling machines. As you can see it's got a big B on it, that's because it's fueling machine Bravo. There are two fueling machines here and you can see from the size and scale of it that it's, it is a, a, a huge beast, it's very heavy. It's, it, 
it's maneuvered around on these gantries across both reactors. It can, it can access both reactors. But this is essentially its parking position where it rests when it's not being used. And underneath me as the, are the uh, standpipes the, that give access to the, the core and the, and the fuel and all, all, the other, all the other stuff. But essentially this is, this is the top of the reactor I'm standing on now. So this big fueling machinery comes along and, and positions itself above one of these standpipes, underneath one of these uh, square slabs, and connects up to it and accesses the, uh, the core. Before the fueling machinery gets here, it picks up a number of new fuel elements from the, from the store, essentially loads itself up with, with new fuel elements. It comes over here with those new fuel elements on board, Having connected itself up to the reactor, there's a, there's a large sort of, um, I'll, I'll call it a grab, that goes down into, the, into a particular channel and it picks up the eight elements one by one. It latches onto, a, onto the top of each element, pulls it up, puts it into the core and does it with the other seven. So it picks all eight out of that particular channel and then it takes the new fuel, which it's brought with it, and reloads those back one at a time into that channel and then when it's finished it's, it, seals, it seals itself up again, seals the reactor up and goes away to do something else. But that's the process in, in, uh, in essence. We're now in the, uh, the gas circulator hall. This is the ground floor now we're, we're, we're at in the, 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 uh, the building. Behind me you can see the, the main curve of, of one of the reactors and uh, this, is, this is reactor two. Um, the, the, the outside of the, the concrete shielding. Behind me here we have one of the four um, steam driven gas circulators and these are essentially large fans inside the, um, um, in, in, inside the inner space of the core which circulate the gas round and takes the heat away from the, from the, uh, from the hot fuel elements and converts the, the water in, in the boilers into steam. So these are, these are the circulating fans. There's lots and lots of pipes and, and, uh, and, and bits of equipment and pumps around here and most of those are here to support this um, turbo turbine. Um, they, they provide the lubricating oil, they provide the oil for the operating valves and all the coolers um, and those kind of things. Well we're now, we're now in the main turbine hall and you can see there are two turbines here one this end, one that end, and each of those was connected to one of the reactors. Um, they're a, they're a multi-cylinder turbine, um, and on the end of which is the, the um, electrical generator. Um, there's lots of lots and lots of equipment in the basement here, all feed heaters and steam pipe work and water pipe work and electric pumps and oil systems and, and all of the a complex array of, of equipment that's needed to support these, um, these turbo generators. They rotated at, at 1,500 RPM, they're 1,500 RPM machines. In its heyday, when this plant was operating, this, this room would be noisier. There'd be, there, you wouldn't be able to have the conversation we're having now, the quality of noise. Um, the, uh, it would be hot, they were very warm plants and, and uh, um, they, uh, particularly in summer, the buildings did get very warm. Um, it does look much as it did um, when it was operating. You can see some of the paintwork is starting to peel a little bit um, on, on, on the colder materials. It looked much smarter than this when, when it was generating. Um, very limited number of controls down here. You can, you can just see a few dials on these panels, essentially monitoring various things. Um, but, but all of the primary controls were up in the main control room. Well, this room is the main control room, and as the name suggests, this is where everything is controlled from. There are, a lot of, there are a lot of controls in this room and a lot of indications, because to support sort of safe, reliable operation of a, of a reactor and, and the, the sort of ancillary equipment, the turbines and the, and, and the other things you need to end up with, gener with electricity coming out the end of the, of the process, um, there's a lot of systems there to support all that. There's, there's sort of um, oil systems and water systems and, and gas systems and, and lots of indications in here of, of the condition of those particular systems, the pressures, the temperatures, um, what's happening in them and the ability to open and close 
valves and, and, and to uh, um, put settings into controllers from up here. So essentially this, this did run, the, the reactor and all of its equipment. One of the things they built into this kind of plant was, we call it redundancy, but it's essentially to ensure that the plant continue, can continue running, we put in a number of each, each particular pump so that you could take out one pump if it developed a fault or you wanted to do routine maintenance on it, put the, and, and, and still keep the plant running. You didn't have to shut it down just because one pump needed a little bit of work on it. So there's, there's multiples of, um, of, of uh, a number of sort of the, the, the features and facilities here. That's why there's so much around. Um, the, 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 um, it's important when running these reactors that you're absolutely confident the things will remain under control, will remain safe, and will safely shut down if they need to. Safety is always uppermost in, up in our thinking, actually, in a place like this, because we know that our primary task is to generate electricity from these, these reactors. But the overriding requirement is to make sure the reactors are themselves safe. This technology is, is, is such that you do need to ensure that the radioactive material is contained, is controlled, and, and a lot of these systems are there to do that. It's not been unusual to find people do a number of decades working in these plants. I enjoyed being part of, the, part of that team, actually. It, was a bit, it was, felt a bit like a sort of ship, and, and you have the privilege of, of coming aboard as captain, and it was a plant that worked very well. It, uh, it performed very well, very consistent, very reliably. It was a very safe place to work, um, and, and it had a, a very... Um, a hard one, but, a, but a, a very good record, and it was something to be proud of. We, we did what we, we were here for, and that was generated electricity 24 hours a day, reliably, safely, and, and that was our job, and we were proud of it.